When you present a commercial solar project, it's a financial proposition. So there has to be some metrics to measure that viability. And is payback period the only thing or are there other better measures? Hi, I'm Belly from Greenwood Solutions. This week we're continuing on our series on commercial solar financial viability and its metrics. So after watching the video, you'll understand what internal rate of return is, return on investment, and some other metrics. Now, if you like what you see, hit that subscription button, and let's get stuck into it. Look, a commercial solar system is a financial proposition. So the salesperson must understand the financial concepts, both from a borrower's perspective and also from a business owner investing their money into something other than solar. Be looking at spending more on um, advertising or marketing for their business, uh, purchasing another machine to uh, increase production and therefore profit, or hiring another worker as well. And you need to know the value of money. Money has a value, and in a previous presentation, we looked at present value, future value, and net present value. Now, but what about ROI, return on investment? What about IRR, internal rate of return, and payback period? The question is, what is the relationship between all these financial concepts? And before that, we have to look at the commercial solar system details and make some assumptions. This whole area of finance is, um, portrayed as being a fairly complicated one, but when you actually look at the maths behind some of these, um, these functions, you know, internal rate of return, net present value, uh, discounted um, payback period, annualised ROI, pretty simple maths. So in this example, we'll look at a commercial solar investment. It's a 100 kilowatt system, and the cost in the business is $100,000. Now the WAC, which is the weighted average cost of capital, is 10% and the length of the investment is six years. Now obviously solar systems last for a lot longer, but we'll start with six years. We have to make some assumptions. The assumptions around this particular system include it's installed in Melbourne, in Australia, north facing. The energy produced per one kilowatt installed is 3.6 kilowatt hours on average. The initial electricity price is 25 cents per kilowatt hour. The feed-in tariff price is fixed at seven cents per kilowatt hour. The electricity price increases 2% every year. System maintenance is $500 per year and increases 2% every year after that. 80% of the solar goes to the loads and 20% goes to the grid. The panels degrade 2% in output in the first year and 0.25% every year after that. So we've got all of those now. Below you can see the savings per year and the total savings after six years is $170,000. So what is the return on the investment? The return on investment is an approximate measure of an investment's profitability. So the return on investment equals the net return on the investment divided by the cost of investment times 100%. So we've got $170,000 minus the initial investment $100,000 divided by that $100,000 times 100 to get a percentage and we're looking at a return on investment of 70.10%. Sounds fantastic, doesn't it? But it hasn't taken into consideration the time value of money or how long that investment takes to actually get that return. The advantages of return on investment that it's a relatively uncomplicated metric. It's easy to calculate and as a measure, it is not likely to be misunderstood. There are some disadvantages though. It does not take into account the holding period of investment. In other words, the time period. In this case, it's six years. And ROI does not adjust for risk. And figures can be exaggerated if all the expected costs are not included in the calculation. And that's incredibly important. Now, annualized return on investment helps account for a key emission in standard ROI. Namely, how long an investment is held. So what we have here with FormulaWise is annualized ROI is one plus the ROI to the power one over N minus one times 100%, where N is the number of years of the investment, in this case six. Now when we do the calculation, the annualized ROI is 9.26%, and that's 
a big difference between the standard ROI for the investment of 70.1%. Remember, standard ROI does not take into account the time period. With the scenario we have looked at, the time period is six years, but with solar, the reality is that the system will produce for far longer than that. Let's look at 10 years for a variety of measures. Now, the total savings after 10 years is $292,000. The ROI is 192%, but the annualised ROI is 11.3%. Now, what about payback period? Is this a valid measure of the worth of an investment? And what is payback period? Effectively, payback period helps in revealing the payback period of an investment. Well, it's sort of self-explanatory. It's the time, the number of years it takes for the cash flow of incomes from a particular project to cover the initial investment. So when a CFO faces a choice, he will prefer the project with the shortest payback period. Well, that makes sense. Now, the advantage of the payback period, are it's, it's a simple to use and easy to understand. All that you need to calculate the payback period is the project's initial cost, and the annual cash flows. The disadvantage of payback periods is that it ignores the time value of money, which we covered in the first presentation, and this distorts the true value of the cash flows. So you can use the discounted payback period that can do away with this disadvantage. So the payback period is uh, an interesting one, but it doesn't take into consideration the time value of money. You're probably better off looking at a discounted uh, payback period, and that calculation does uh, effectively add up the present value um, income flow of your particular investment. Uh, so instead of getting a um, payback period of you know, three and a bit years, you're talking about a um, discounted payback period of a little under five years, which is much more realistic. Conclusion, there are many ways that the worth of a particular investment, in this case a 100 kilowatt system, can be looked at. Now, if we look at six years, we can look at the MPV, we have a figure of $20,000, or nearly $21,000. We have an IRR of 17%. We have a return on investment of 70.10%. We have an annualised ROI of 9.26%. We have a payback period of under four years and a discounted payback period of just under five times years. So it's incredibly important to understand what metrics you're using and what language you're using when you're presenting these projects to a customer. Thanks so much for watching our presentation on internal rate of return and return on investment. I'm Belly from Greenwood Solutions. Now, if you have any questions, any inquiries, or indeed some answers, feel free to drop us a line. And if you want to see more of these videos, hit that subscription button. See you next time.